The Business Report, brought to you with the compliments of Republic Bank. We're the one for you. In business tonight, the recruitment process is set to shortly get underway ahead of construction of a new hardware and home improvement megastore at Kendall Hill in Christchurch. That's according to Sharon York, the human resources manager for Dutch company Kuiman, which officially broke ground for construction of the new store yesterday. She says the company has been receiving numerous inquiries from Barbadians about positions via both email and social media platforms. I am proud to tell you that recently we have started with the process of recruitment. Uh, we are recruiting, uh, we started with the recruitment of seven key positions together with our HR partner, our local HR partner, LCI. And I'm happy to say that next week we're going to start with the first job interviews. Also revealed the number of people who will be employed during the construction phase and after the store has been completed. During the construction period of the mega store, up to 250 people will find employment through the project. They are not engaged with us directly, but either through our contractor, through our the different subcontractors, but also via the different partners we are currently working with. But when the store will open her doors, Corman Barbados will employ between 100 and 120 employees. Well, Minister of International Business Ronald Toppin says government is aware of the EU's recent blacklisting of Barbados, noting that they are addressing the matter appropriately. The minister gave the reminder that Barbados recently converged its domestic and international corporate tax rates to a range between 5.5% to 1%. He adds that he is therefore sure that Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Mia Amor Motley will have much to say on the matter next Wednesday during the much expected budgetary debate. Minister Toppin says he will also be further weighing in on the issue then. He says Barbados' actions remain transparent as the country has already been deemed compliant by the OECD, which is the globally recognized body for the setting and monitoring of international tax standards. And time now to take a look at how those stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. We get started in Jamaica, where Jamaica Producers Group Limited was the volume leader, with 1,219,097 units at $22.08 each. And they were followed by Supreme Ventures Limited and Panjam Investment Limited. In Trinidad and Tobago, JMMB Group Limited was the volume leader, with 106,038 shares changing hands for a value of $186,626.88. And they were followed by Trinidad and Tobago NGL Limited and First Caribbean International Bank Limited. Right here in Barbados, Goddard Enterprises Limited was the volume leader, trading 4,479 shares at $3.30 each. And they were followed by Epley Caribbean Property Fund, SCC Value Fund, and the West India Biscuit Company Limited. Two arrows coming together as one. The indelible link between our customers and the bank. One arrowhead represents the needs, dreams, and aspirations of the people of the communities that we serve. While the other represents the people within our Republic Bank Group and the products and services that we provide as we work together to build successful societies. These two arrowheads come together in a tight interlocking embrace, symbolizing the coming together of these two sets of aspirations to form one goal, one people, one bank, Republic Bank. We're the one for you. And in international business, social media giant Facebook is still reeling from what is believed to be the most serious outage in its history. The outage yesterday also affected its other platforms, including WhatsApp and Instagram. More than 2 billion people, around a quarter of the world's population, use Facebook. But on Wednesday from around 16 GMT, 
Many of them tried and failed to access services and post content, not just on Facebook, but its other platforms too, including WhatsApp and Instagram. Facebook is investigating but insists it's not a cyber attack. Whatever the reason, many Facebook users didn't like it, at times using its rival Twitter to vent their anger. We've taken a system, the internet, which was meant to be decentralized, and we've uh, introduce single points of failure like Facebook. This is why decentralization is so important. This is why centralization is uh, such a problem, because if you have two billion people and their uh, means of communicating using the internet is a single place, Facebook, which also makes its money by spying on everything that they're saying and as they're, commu as they're communicating, um, this is not a resilient system. It's not a system that's compatible with human rights or democracy. An outage like this affects users, but it has the potential to interrupt Facebook's revenue streams too. The company makes money from your data, drawing on your likes, your connections, what you and millions of others have been up to to help businesses target their advertisements. It's business. When we come back, we'll hear about some challenges with picking cotton this season. The Business Report, brought to you with the compliments of Republic Bank. We're the one for you.